Today I'm going to make a miniature steel plate design and I have to thank Brain Exploder for this modification. If you go to his YouTube channel, you'll see how his is made. It is fantastic. But I don't have the money to buy the little plastic things that he makes, so I'm going to design my own. So stay tuned. So what I've done was taken a scrap piece of deck board, and this one is 35 and 3 8 inches, and I cut a piece of 2 by 4 for the front. So here's my idea. What I'm going to do is take these plates here, like this, and I had to drill out two holes so that it lined up with these two holes. I had to drill a hole in this one also. And so these two holes will line up with that hole and that hole in the metal piece. So that hole and that hole will line up with two of these. And I'll show you how I measured this out in a minute. So my idea is to take this, put a hinge on it, and then it'll knock down. So my hinge will attach to this bottom portion here. And I wanted it so that this strap here was not sticking up above this. So this right here is the front. Be shooting from this direction. And that way, the only thing that gets hit is this plate here. And it gets knocked down. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out my straps. These straps and these electrical panel covers. So I use my 3 16 drill bit to drill out these two holes here to fit this plate. So all I did was I took I took the plate and these right here you can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're in the electrical department. All it is is an electrical plate cover. So my center hole is right here. I'm going to take that, line it up with this bottom hole here. And then try and get this hole, this top center hole, and that hole all lined up. Once I do that, take and make a mark. Take a mark. And that's where I'm going to drill. And I'll put a T. That way I know that's my top. Now I'm going to drill these holes out on this plate. I want to take a clamp, my quick grip, and clamp this down to my project table. You want to be as safe as possible with this. Now I'm going to drill out my plates. So I'm taking the bolt that came with it, and this is the front of the plate, putting it through our holes, and on the other side, I'm putting a flat washer, a lock washer, and then 
and that. Get my baby wrench, hold it in. Now I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and screw this in the rest of the way. Nice and firm. Now I'm going to assemble the rest of these and then put on a fresh coat of paint on these. I think I'll paint them white. Or maybe red. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. I didn't fuss too much about exact measurements on these. I just tried to evenly space them out all the way across. And I'm going to use these L brackets to attach the boards to each other because I don't want any metal other than the plates themselves on the outside of this so I decided to go with these L brackets. I'm going to try it out and see how it works out and we'll see. The only thing I did do was leave a bigger gap in the middle and somewhere, somehow, some way, I'm going to put a string here for the reset plate to reset the plates. We'll see how that works out. I haven't figured that one out quite yet. so. I want to go ahead and attach these brackets. Before it gets too dark out here, I've decided to paint these a fluorescent orange color to make them highly visible. Okay, I'm going to let that set up overnight and come back tomorrow and finish this project up. For this portion, you're going to need your plate, some tin snips. I'm going to use pop rivets, a 2 inch hinge, and I'm using the 1 8 inch pop rivets with washers. So the first thing I want to do is determine which way this is going to lay inside the actual target itself. So my target's facing me, I'm looking at it, and what I want it to do, I want this plate to sit in front, on the front side of this hinge, and fall flat. So this is going to fall flat like this. So what I need to do is line these holes up. I line the outside holes up with the hinge holes. And this is where our tin snips are going to come into play. Let me see if I can get this in close so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so my two holes are lined up. You see the holes lined up here and here. Here and here. And now you see this bump right here by on the hinge part? We're going to have to cut this off right here. So I'm going to take my pencil and draw a line all the way across here and take my tin snips and cut that portion off because if we don't, this bottom part is going to interfere with the hinge. It's going to interfere with it falling flat, so we're going to cut that off and get rid of it. Okay, you see I got my line. I'm going to cut that off now. This doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. Just need to get rid of that small portion there. And I keep checking this to make sure I have it pointed in the right direction. Make sure it's going to fall the way I want it to before I do anything permanent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in my rivets. I'm going to drop those both in at the same time. That way they're both in there. I know they're in there and I know they're going to fit in there properly. And then I'm going to flip this over put my washer on and then I'm going to go ahead and ratchet one of these off so. okay, 
And then the other. Okay, there we go. It's on there, it's nice and secure. And then when that pellet hits that, boom, it's just gonna fall nice and flat. All right, I'm gonna finish up these and then I'll be right back to you. Okay, everybody, I wanted to show you guys this real quick before it started raining. So, all I did was attach my hinge to the to the um, back side of my backstop here. And now, just a quick hit, just like that. And tomorrow, I'm going to come out here and work on a resetting, a remote or a resetting with some kind of a string or something. I haven't figured that out yet, but I will. And I'm going to wrap this up for the day. Go ahead and get the rest of these mounted on, and then I will come back tomorrow and work on something for resetting. Hello, everybody. I'm back again today, and it's threatening to rain again, yet again. But I'm going to keep working until it either does rain or gets too dark. So, continuing on. I've got all my hinges attached to the plate, so I've got all of them attached. I already know they're all going to lay this way, like that. Now my next thing that I want to do is figure out where exactly to tie down this hinge at. I want this to be easy to knock over. I don't want it to be really, really hard. So what I'm doing is I'm holding my hinge like this and then I'm touching it with my finger to see how hard it is to knock down and trying to find that right balance is kind of hard but this right here is perfect so what I'm going to do hold it in that place I'm going to take my pencil make a circle and just kind of color it in a little bit so I know exactly where I want to put that hinge I color it in just in case it moves so I know exactly where I want it. Then I'm going to screw it in place. I think that did the trick. That one falls down great. This one, a little bit stiff, but I think it's still going to work. Okay, this is my idea number one. We'll see how this one works out. I'm going to use this heavy gauge steel wire. You can find this at Lowe's Home Depot where they have all the things that hang up pictures, picture frames, and hanging stuff like that by the command hooks. This is where I found this stuff. So my idea is to bend it, have a little bit to tie down come up a small loop and then come back down kind of like a square u shape upside down square u let's see how this works okay i'm going to show you right quick and what i'll do is i'll measure this thing out so you know how long it is so in case you want to make one for yourself you can learn through my mistakes and not have to do what i'm doing and just make it Okay, so the idea is to put this here, and this is going to swivel up and down like this. Y'all see what I mean? So when the target gets knocked down, this is going to, well, of course it's not, I'm not going to put it there, but it's going to reset. I might have that too long. I'll get hung up on there. Hey, I'm glad I did that. But you get the idea. Okay. I got partially, I've got it partially figured out. So, I came up about three inches here. Right at about three inches. Okay, make that three and a half inches. Nope, three and a quarter. Three and a quarter inches. So I came up three and a quarter inches here, and I laid these three down. 
I figured that this right here is going to need to be right here on the edge. So I'm going to hold that down with my thumb and when I bring it forward. It's not stuck in the table. All right. So when I bring it forward, rotate it. And that's how that's going to work. All right, I got my round file here. I'm just gonna use this as a guide to make my loop. And this wire is pretty thick, it's tough. So this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, I believe. All right, I'm gonna take this and around like this. it seemed easy in my mind. What I'll be using are three quarter inch fence staples. Just something I already had on hand. So I'm just going to hammer those down in here like so. I just got to find the right spot. Make sure it's the right spot for them. Let's we'll see how this works out. And because I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out, I am not going to put these all the way down. You want to put them down far enough that it won't slide out. Okay, I got some paracord here. I want to tie this into the loop here. I'm just going to do a simple knot. And pull this this way. Alright guys, this is a moment of truth. We'll see if this works or not. So all our targets are knocked down. Pull, reset. Ow. Did it come out of the thing? I think it would work. I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work. That came out exactly the way I had hoped. The only thing is, this part right here is just a little too short and it's going to pull out there. So I need to figure that out. I think that would involve moving this fence staple further in to hold that in there. Okay, so all the targets are knocked down. Just don't want to reset that last one. Let's see if it makes a difference having that knot on the top here. Ah, it does. So I need to have that knot on the top. Keep it up here. Try it again. Okay, everybody I think I've got this figured out so what I did was I used a quick link I didn't use the loop that I made here and I tied it to this side because it was having a hard time resetting this one particular target here on this end so I decided to put the quick link on this end to see if I can get a little bit more leverage to reset this one single target and it seems to be working so I'm gonna lay all these down and it lays down on its own this resetting bar lays down lays right back down on its own without any springs or anything on it so I'm just going to leave that just like it is show you again 
Again, all that is is just a quick link, just tie it over to my paracord, and boom. I got lucky in that this the way this is on here that it resets itself. It's the way it's bent also because it's got like a little bit of a bend. How it comes upwards on this end, and that helps it lay back down on its own. You can see how it does. Hey everybody, I'm going to go ahead and practice on this plate rack, and I am 20 yards, 20 yards away. The camera it looks closer because it's zoomed in. But I'm 20 yards away, so let's check this out. Well, unfortunately, I was not able to get the targets to knock down with my little handheld, so I switched over to my pellet rifle, and now I'm going to test it out, see how it works on this. Okay, that was a lot of fun. Now to test my reset mechanism. See if I can find the end of the string here. Alright, that worked perfectly. That worked perfectly. I'm going to go for a second round. That was a lot of fun. That was round two. My rifle, the scopes are off. It's shooting low, so all those misses, it was going over the target, so I had to start aiming low on the bottom side of the target. Now I want to go down and look at and see what kind of damage that this the pellets left on there. Alright, so you see the pellets, when they hit, they leave a bit more of a ding than compared to the BBs. Pellet ding. It's a BB ding. But uh, this thing is holding up very nicely. Very nicely. That's doggone near center right there. Pretty darn good. <laughs> 